In this module, we are going to discuss the risk assessment methodology. There are four steps to quantitative risk assessment. The first step, risk assessment, is site-specific. The goal of this is to look at a contaminated site and to identify the human health exposure pathways and the concentration of pollutants and the type of pollutants. So one thing to note on the risk assessment data collection stage is that this is site-specific. We need to understand the contaminants release potential and the human exposure pathways. The second stage is toxicity assessment. The goal of this is to understand the dose response evaluation of how a chemical can affect a human upon different concentrations or doses. At this point, you should have the units for dose understood. They are milligrams of the contaminant per kilogram of body weight. The response here can either be an absolute response, such as death, or it could be a graded response, which could include differences in blood chemistry, an increase of body weight, such as obesity. In class, I reviewed a typical dose response curve and introduced two vocabulary words. These are the LD50 and the no observed adverse effect level. In your textbook, you're going to work with this table where you look up different chemicals and there are two exposure pathways, oral and inhalation, that are represented in this. Now, many toxic chemicals are not listed in this. And if you were interested in those, you would be directed toward an online database that is maintained by the EPA. And the, this is referred to as the Integrated Risk Information System, IRIS. The third step to quantitative risk assessment is exposure assessment. So in exposure assessment, we will estimate the magnitude of exposure to the chemical. It's going to be specific to the concentration at the site and the exposure pathways at the site. There is a generic intake equation. CDI stands for chronic daily intake. So we'll be looking at the dose, milligram per kilogram of body per day. It's going to be really important that you define all of your units and show that these cancel out in order to do these calculations correctly. For different exposure pathways, you might find it helpful to look at these specific forms of the equation. You'll notice here that different forms of the equation are based to the exposure pathway. Ingestion of drinking water, ingestion while swimming, and there would be slightly different factors that could be used in this. But let me emphasize, cancel your units. The final answer needs to be in terms of milligram, kilogram per day, because that is the unit for the chronic daily intake. As you use this equation, you will need to make many assumptions. Your book outlines some typical assumptions that are used in quantitative risk assessment. It is assumed that when you are swimming, you swallow 50 milliliters per hour. You may need to make other assumptions in the calculations. Define all assumptions. In this example, you're asked to estimate the chronic daily intake, so you're finding CDI of toluene from exposure to a city water supply with a concentration in the water of one milligram per liter. You're to assume that the adult female consumes water for 70 years. Let's take that as the averaging time. She abhors swimming, which means she hates swimming, but she does take a bath for 20 minutes every day. So the exposure frequency for bathing will be 20 minutes per day, and it'll be seven days per week because she does it every day. Now, we have already looked at two common exposure pathways in those sentences. The first would be ingestion of drinking water. The second would be bathing. And there are two typical exposure pathways during bathing. The first is dermal contact because your body is submerged for some time and there can be absorption of the chemical. And the second is inhalation because stagnant water reaches a vapor pressure with the air above the bath 
and you breathe in a volatile contaminant such as toluene. So we have here that we're to assume the toluene air concentration during bathing is one microgram per meter cubed. The dermal uptake is 9.0 times 10 to the negative 6 meter per hour and 80% of her body is submerged. Okay, so these are our assumptions. The approach will be to take the CDI is equal to each of these ingestion pathways. So we will come up with the total CDI is equal to the CDI of one plus the CDI of the second exposure pathway plus the CDI of the third. So let's solve for those. The first exposure pathway, drinking water, is equal to a CDI of the concentration of water times the intake rate times the exposure, exposure frequency times the exposure duration divided by the body weight times the averaging time. So the concentration in water was one milligram per liter. How much does a person drink on average a day? For that assumption, let's go to our table. An adult drinks 2.3 liters per water a day. It's also assumed that the body weight of a female is 65.4 kilograms. So we'll come back here and say 2.3 liters per day. And a person drinks water 365 days per year. And we are told that she drinks for 70 years. So all of the units in the numerator cancel so that we are left with milligrams in the numerator, which we should. In the denominator, we need to divide by the body weight, which was 65.4 kilograms for an average female, multiplied by the averaging time. But we need units of milligram per kilogram day. So in order to get years today, we're going to multiply by a conversion factor of 365 days per year. So the years cancel out and we're left with kilogram day in the denominator, which are the correct units. This is equal to 0 0.03516 milligram per kilogram per day. The second exposure pathway is dermal absorption during bathing. This is given an acronym of AD in your textbook. And it is equal to the concentration in the water times the surface area times the dermal uptake rate and then the expo exposure time, exposure frequency, exposure duration, and any conversion factors that are necessary divided by the body weight and the averaging time. So the concentration of the water is one milligram per liter. The surface area is an assumption that needs to be made. We see here there's an assumption of the skin surface available for an adult female of 1.69 square meter. So we'll mul multiply 1.69 square meter, but we also know that only 80% of the body was submerged. So we'll multiply by 0.8 multiplied by the dermal uptake rate, which was given as 9.0 times 10 to the negative 6 meter per hour. And then we know that this person bathes for 20 minutes every day, which is 0.33 hours. So you need to get really good at conversions. 20 minutes multiplied by 60 minutes per hour gives you 0.33 hours. All right, so 0.33 hours per day, and then she bathed for 365 days a year and 70 years. We have one issue with this. Here we have liters, and then we have meter squared times meter would be meter cubed. So in order to get those units to cancel out, how many meters cubed are in a liter? I know that there are 1,000 liters per meter cubed. So now, liters are going to cancel out 
the meter cubed is going to cancel out, hours cancel, days cancel, and years cancel. And I'm left with milligram in the numerator. I'm going to divide by the body weight of a female, the averaging time of 70 years, and I'm going to convert 365 days per year. The third exposure pathway is inhalation while bathing. So the CDI is equal to the concentration in air, the intake rate, the exposure time, exposure frequency, and exposure duration divided by body weight and averaging time. So the concentration in air is one microgram per meter cubed, and I need to know how much the average female breathes per day. The amount of air breathed daily by an adult female is 11.3 meter cubed. 11.3 meter cubed per day, and then she breathes 365 days per year, and we're doing this for 70 years, divided by the average weight, the averaging time, and a conversion factor to get me to the correct units I want. We're not quite done. We have the correct units on the bottom, but on the top we have micrograms. In order to get that to milligram, we need to multiply the top by a conversion unit. So on the top we're going to multiply this by 1000 microgram per milligram. And that will get rid of the micrograms and leave us with the correct unit. All right, so if you were to plug all those numbers into your calculator, the second would result in 6.14 times 10 to the negative 8 milligram per kilogram per day, and the third is equal to 1.73 times 10 to negative 4 milligrams per kilogram per day. So to finish the problem, we need to add all three of those together to get the total CDI. And you can see that it is dominated by the drinking water intake. So the correct answer is 0 0.0353 milligram per kilogram per day. The fourth step to risk assessment is risk characterization. So this is quantified for compounds with a low dose cancer risk that would be anything below 0.01, which are most environmental contaminants because the EPA sets our regulations at a 10 to the negative 4 to 10 to the negative 7 risk. So this equation is typically applied. Risk is equal to the CDI multiplied by the slope factor, which you get from toxicity assessment. So if you remember this table, these columns, the slope factor for oral and inhalation will be that number. The example here, if the oral reference dose of benzene is consumed according to IRIS, what is the associated risk? Well, I'll tell you that that dose, if you were to look it up, would be one milligram per kilogram per day. And so risk here, is equal to the CDI times the slope factor, which would be equal to one milligram per kilogram per day, and we need to look up the slope factor. But we know that we're looking it up for oral exposure. So we go back to this table, and we see that the slope factor for benzene, the oral slope factor is 0 0.015 kilogram per kilogram day per milligram. 0 0.015 kilogram day per milligram. And you see that these units cancel out. And this is equal to 0 0.015. You will be calculating the CDI and then using it to calculate the risk. Remember that risk is unitless, and this means that 15 people per 1,000 would have the adverse effect, or there is a 10 to the negative 2 risk, because this equals 1.5 times 10 to the negative 2.